So this is question seven. This is the section B, this is context and applications. Uh, just to reiterate what context and applications is, it's kind of more of a mixture of topics that kind of tests you on your ability to apply everything you've learned to a problem. Okay, so this problem says that an indoor cycling race has a rolling start. The speed of the two competing cyclists in meters per second as they cross the starting line, each lap was recorded as following. So cyclist A has a starting speed of 2 meters per second and accelerates uniformly by 1.5 meters per second during the first 5 seconds. Cyclist B has a starting speed of 1.5 meters per second and accelerates uniformly by 2.5 meters per second during the first 5 seconds. So complete the following table to show the speed of each cyclist during the first 5 seconds of the race. Okay. Well, <clears throat> cyclist A started off at 2 meters per second and cyclist B starts as 1.5 meters per second, okay? And just increasing by 1.5 every time for cyclist A will give you 3.5, 5, 6.5, 8.5, 5, and 9.5. Or down here, adding 2.5 each time will give you 4, 6.5, 9, 11.5, and 14, okay? And that's that part done there. The next part says to display the change in speed of both cyclists on a suitable graph. Alright, so the time starts at zero and goes to five. Just a general rule here guys, just in case you didn't know, uh, x-axis first line, y-axis second line. So cyclists are, sorry, time, time is going to be your x-axis. Top line is always your x-axis. Sorry, general rule, usually your x-axis. So time, time. And these are acceleration values, so I put that on the y-axis there, okay? And looking at these values, the highest I need to go for acceleration is 14, okay? So I've made up my graph that way. The highest I needed to go for time was 5 seconds, and the highest I needed to go for acceleration is 14 seconds, all right? So I just did this map, or this graph out uh, first to save a bit of time. So, okay, so I totally was not happy with that last graph that I drew. So there it is again, done properly this time. The mistake I made was when I was doing the red line, I had actually reduced the gap here by three instead of four and then applied the same to the rest of my greens. And so I skewed my graph a little bit. I know, a terrible mistake to make, a very easy mistake to make, so watch out for it, okay? So that's very important, guys, that it, I've given the same amount of space to these values down here on my x-axis, so there's a gap of four squares, four squares, four squares. And over here I have the same gap, three squares, three squares, three squares, three squares. If I, if I was going four, then two, then three squares, you're going to totally wreck your graph. So long as you're consistent here and consistent here, even if they're not the same, like there's three squares for this gap and four for this one, but it's three the whole way up and four the whole way across, that's perfectly fine. And that's the graph done properly there. Okay, so part C, part one says, use your graph to find the speed of both cyclists after four and a half seconds. Okay, so we'll go to the graph. Four and a half seconds is down here. Okay, so what I'm going to do is go to where four and a half is and go up. All right. Don't worry if you go beyond, it's not really that important, right? So at four and a half seconds, cyclist A, the red cyclist, is going approximately, remember that you can't from a graph get an exact value, all right, is approximately going to be eight and two thirds, okay? So eight and two thirds meters per second, while cyclist B is going to be going approximately Approximately 12.75 about thereabouts, okay? So going back, now that's showing your work guys. Once you've done this, they'll know that this is how you view. So all you have to do now on the far side, back here, is to write your answers in, okay? So let's do that. So cyclist A, which was our red cyclist, was going eight and two thirds meters per second. So eight and two thirds meters per second, okay? While cyclist B was going approximately 12 point, um, about 12 point, say 75 meters per second, okay? And maybe just put in these approximate marks just to show that 
you're not saying it's exactly that because you are only getting an estimate when yeah, you so use a graph. The next part says the time when cyclist B overtakes cyclist A. All right. So well, that's going to be when their speeds are the same. Okay. So cyclist B is going to overtake cyclist A at this point here where the two lines intersect. All right. So they want the time. So you just go here. It happens very quickly. Alright, and it happens just less than half a second. So approximately 0.45 seconds. Okay, approximately 0.45 seconds. That's what I'm going to write down. So, uh, approx. Approx is represented by that symbol there. 0 0.45 seconds. Okay. All right. So part D is, says find an equ the equations that model the speed of both cyclists. Okay, well, when you're trying to make an equation to model something, think about your constants and think about your variables. Or think about, in this case, let's look at cyclist A. Cyclist A started at a speed of 2 meters per second, right? So 2 meters per second. All right. But he's also uniformly increasing by 1.5 every time, every second. So x could be our seconds, they're the variables, and it's 1.5 every time, every second. So I could say 1.5x plus the 2 meters per second he was doing at the same time is actually going to represent the speed. Now just for fun, let's see if that's right. So let's see, find out what his speed is at 2 seconds, so 1.5 multiplied by 2 seconds plus 2 is equal to, well 1.5 multiplied by 2 is 3, plus 2 is 5. Let's go back to this here, and at 2 seconds, cyclist A is going 5, okay? So that models that one there. And for cyclist B, cyclist B started at 1.5, but changed by 2.5 meters per second every time. So 2.5x plus the 1.5 to start with will model this one. And I'm not going to show an example there because hopefully you the first one proves that this works. Okay. Part E says find algebraically the time when the speeds of the cyclists are equal. Well, algebraically, we are saying that when cyclist A's equation is equal to cyclist B's equation, right? So we're saying when 1.5x plus 2 is equal to 2.5x plus 1.5. All right. And to solve this, bring the x's to one side and numbers to the other. So you get 1.5x minus 2.5x, just brought that over there. I'm going to bring this plus 2 over here. It's going to equal 1.5 minus 2, which is going to give me minus x is equal to minus 0.5. So x is going to equal a half. Okay, so algebraically, the time when the speeds of the cyclists are equal is actually at half a second, which shows that overtaking, I'm slightly off here. I did say approximately back here, so I'm okay. But algebraically, it's exactly at a half second, okay? So half a second. And that is question seven.